Right, fellas, so... No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. He thought no. We I'm starting, joking. I'm starting, I'm starting. What's going on, everyone? That's a bit too loud. How's everyone doing? Hope you are all well. We are currently, where are we in the world? He had to put the serious voice. Hello, everyone. Where uh, are we in the world? Hope you're well. We are currently in Dubai, and we are going to pick up a white god, Olive. Mm. So we are currently in Dubai. We are not in London at the moment. Fuck London. We are with this degenerate. Thank you very much. He is a watch dealer. Yes. If, you, if you're not you a know. trader, you're poor, you're poor. Doesn't matter how much money you make. If you're not a trader, what are you, a peasant? You're, a peasant. you're poor. You don't have that freedom that I have. Uh, you didn't introduce me, or the no introduction. Okay, either. I'll So, this is Vlasco. Yes. Little bit of a backstory. How did me and you meet? You might, was, you might, do you want to tell them? I was your first student. Back uh, in, let, let no, 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 no. So, back in the day when I used to do one to ones, before ZM Academy actually launched and became a whole shebang, I used to do one to ones. He was one of my first ever students that I one to one. He moved over to the watch game whilst getting introduced to the trading game. And unfortunately, he found his love and his passion in watches. So, he, that's why I call him the. the, 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 the <laughs> That's why nah. I call him a degenerate because he left trading for watches. Nah, but, but it worked but for look, him. But look at, so it from the, look at it from the good side. Then what? me and Zayn became very, very good friends, very close friends. I'm a brother. We did. And Zayn is now ZM Capitals. And ZM Capitals is connected with almost all the profitable traders that are actually big in the game. Now, when these guys make money, what do they do? They want to buy watches. And who do they shout? The boy Vlasco. Oi. That's it. Who did I buy my first watch from? So, so ah, first I, I, you know, I didn't actually buy my first watch from you. No, but I lined it up for you. No, you didn't. The first, my first watch was the Hulk. You yeah. didn't line that up. I'm the, I, I pulled up uh, after for you. Nah, $8. nah, that, that was the got... that was the Batman. That was for my birthday. That was my second watch. Oh, is it? Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, my first watch wasn't from my student, which is quite sad to be honest with you. Uh, it was. I, I remember watch. this very clearly. It was September, the 27th. I bought my first uh, Hulk Submariner. And then that, the month the after that, October the 29th, it was one day before my birthday, I messaged Vlasco. I was like, hey bro, I heard you're getting into the watch game. I'm looking for a Batman. Can you source this? Bish bash bosh, he made a few phone calls. I got my Batman from my student. Then oh, another man. watch. Then another watch. Because boom, 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 because I'm hit, rich. I just hit, buy hit, watches hit, just like that. Watches, um, make a few, few profits in the markets. That I'm joking. Anyways. Let me, let me just want to mention one more thing. So instead of me actually going to trade, what I done was I let the traders make their money and mm. <laughs> then bring it to me. Mm -hmm. Got so it. You got, yeah. you got to work smart. Nah, you're a hard. smart man still. So you stop trading because the traders are going to make the money and give you the money in watches. Exactly. Mm. Ah, I see the vision. I see the vision. Now, in case any traders watching, here, what do we have? Zane, so let's flip the camera. Right now we have a platinum Daytona on his wrist. How much are you selling this for, Blasco? Eighty-two thousand pounds. Eighty-two thousand. Negotiable if you're Zane's friend. Now, how much did you buy this watch for? Seventy-two thousand pounds. Seventy-two thousand pounds. Which means there is a ten thousand dollar margin. On, is it dollars or pounds? No, not pounds. Pounds, pounds, pounds. So he has a ten thousand pound margin on this watch. That is how he makes money. Yes. Guys, that is the beauty of that business. That is the beauty of Do business. Do that 10 times a month, that's 100 bags. You're a rich man. Do that for 10 months, that's a million. You're and a rich man. Some people's dreams, and some people say, it's going to take me five years to make a million. It could be 10 months. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's light work. Sales is the skill you need to learn. You're not a businessman if you're not a salesman. Exactly that. You can sell dog shit to anyone if you just know how to sell it. I know people. But don't do that because I'm it becomes easier to sell when you sell quality. Right, right or wrong? Correct. Now, on our day, what are we doing now? Where are we, we heading? We are heading to Hookah Buzz in Dubai to pick up uh, an olive from a dear customer of mine. Lovely, lovely. So, we are currently on the way to a shisha lounge slash restaurant uh, down in Jumeirah. We're going to pick up a watch for Vlasco. And then um, I'm gonna do a little breakdown for you guys uh, because um, I purchased two 200k challenges from a prop firm called Ascend Capital. And I actually passed phase one in two days on both of the accounts. Congrats. Thank you, thank you. Put, put, put the cheers. Okay. The effect, done, done. Edit out, you know what to do. 
Anyways, um, I'll do a little breakdown for you guys on the trades that I took. I took EU shorts. You can do a breakdown. Um, so basically, I bought this watch for twenty-six thousand pound. Which one? The, the the one we're picking up. The now? one we're picking up now is twenty seventeen white gold olive. Yeah. And I have it sold for twenty nine thousand pounds, meaning I have three thousand pound profit, which is just over ten percent. So I think we're talking like twelve thirteen percent. Lovely. And uh, all I had to do was actually get the confirmation from my customer before buying it from my other customer. Yep. And I only bought it once I received my deposit because my deposit was £2,000. So let's assume that he flops and he doesn't buy the watch. You've made £2,000. That means I bought the watch for £24,000. Exactly, because you keep his £2,000. And in this case, I can easily go to Gold Souk, I can go to Hatton Garden, or wherever I am in the world, I can go to the Diamond District. Get it gone, make two, three thousand pounds. But in this case, so either way, he's at a W. If the client fails, doesn't end up buying the watch, the client has deposited two thousand, two thousand stays in Blasco's pocket. 100%. He also ends up with the watch, but that's an extra bonus. He goes, even if he breaks even on the watch, he make he walks out with exactly two thousand. And if you don't have money to buy the watch like I do, all you have to do, you've made, you've got two thousand pound deposit. You call up the trader that you bought it from, or the customer that you're buying it from. You're like, sorry, bro deal fell out here's 500 pound or here's a thousand pound you're still up for doing nothing yeah be smart exactly and buy exactly those. so this is an interesting vlog it's a uh, trading slash it's, it's watch trading, trading. It's, tra it's trading overall trading the financial markets and trading in a watch game exactly and there's a minimum value value it. value guys zedup capitals is where you want to get your value free mm. content we don't just post trading content here Every content. Every content, brother. Every mm. content. You get me. But anyways, let's see how the day goes. I will update you guys once we arrive there, show you the piece once we collect it. And once I'm home, I will do the market breakdown for you guys on the two trades that I took to pass these challenges. Cheers. Cheers. And now we have arrived. At Hookah Buzz. At Hookah Buzz. And we are debating. Ready to collect the piece client that's not answering the phone <laughs> but um but yeah you see this is what i love about the bike guys look at this you don't see this stuff yeah, bro. Burris, oh, God, bro. ferrari behind it new shape range rover other range rover a black urus over there a maybach over there it's just different out here guys it's just different Right, and just like that, we picked up the second piece. White gold, olive day date. How much did you say you got this for again? 25, Let's flip the camera. 26. 26 grand for a 2017 olive day date. And we're going to let it go for how much? 29,000 pounds. Easy, easy drink. Quick flip. Let's make it happen. Turn into some ass. My manager said I'm stupid for still rolling with a scram. I hit explaining myself, and I don't think he'll understand. Me. Got, got the spell. The rolls got day dates. What do you think? Yeah, for me, it's not about what I like, it's about how much money I can make on the piece. Fair I enough. can wear a fucking date just smooth bezel. If I'm making two bags on it, I'll wear it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Me personally, I don't give a shit how much money I make on the watch. As long as I, I look on the downside more than I look at the upside. As long as I get the watch at a good price and I don't lose on it when I sell, that's what I care about. And the most important thing is that it's an enjoyable piece that I actually like. Now, if you guys know me, I'm big in, uh, into my Rolexes. At some point back in, when was it? 2023 or 2022 when I used to live in Canary Wharf? 2022. No, no, no. 2022. Getting into 2023. Yeah. 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 In 2022, that was my biggest collect. That was at the time when I had the biggest collection of Rolexes. I had about 15 pieces. Remember? Yeah. I had two rubies. I had the ruby day date. Yeah, I had the rose gold, a rose gold olive. Yeah, you bought two day dates for the first week of January 2023. Yeah, just before I moved to Dubai. Yeah, you bought the olive yeah. and the ruby. and the ruby, and then I moved to Dubai. And then you sold it after like five days. <laughs> <laughs> Got bored of the pieces. But, uh, but yeah all right so as you guys can see two accounts purchased on the 26th let's go on to the first one Get it load up 
Oh, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> break me, break me, you can't. Anyways, um, as you guys can see, we scroll down all the way down here. As you guys can see, 26. It's still in progress, but uh, you can see a profit target was hit. It was passed, but um, the daily, uh, the minimum trading days, which is three days, still is still in progress. So tomorrow, I'll just place one trade and we would have passed this account and moved on to phase two. And you guys can see on the dashboard, on the second account right there, if it loads up, there we go. You guys can see that was also passed and um, also minimum trading days needs to be hit. So tomorrow we will have the credentials for phase two on both those accounts. And I'll update you guys with how phase two goes. Even a corner in the cob, I'm already in the Champions League. It's on me if I stand on street. Now we're back at the apartment. This is the current collection. Whoosh. This was the piece that was grabbed today. White gold, olive dow. This is the rest of the collection. If you're interested, you know what to do. What do we have here? Got Batman, Panda. This was my second watch. This was actually the watch that Vlasco sourced me October 2021. And this is the watch that... Was it 2021? Yeah, 2021. And this is the watch that you bought in 2023, January? January 2020, 2020, 2020, 2023. 2023 was this piece right over here. I bought this watch from Ali, January 2023, sold it back to him, March 2023, right? Yeah, yeah. So these are actually two of my pieces right over here. It's not the actual same piece. Same piece. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure this one is, no? No, that's, that's my one. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so that's the current collection. And now we're going to get into the market breakdown. So the first trade that we took was EU sells. This was the trade I was taking yesterday. Let's get right into that breakdown. So now we got the chart open on the five minute as this is exactly what I saw before executing these cells. Let's just replay price back to this point just before it swept the area of liquidity. All right, cool. So this is what price action looked like when I identified this setup. So you guys can see this was New York open right over here. Let's get rid of this horizontal ray. You guys can see this was New York open. New York's price action suggested that we were going to be bearish for that session, right? And how did we identify that? On the five minute structure, you can see price was taking out these lows, printing a series of lower lows and lower highs. Okay, therefore, we identified we are in a bearish sentiment, sentiment. So we look for areas to sell from. First thing we've done once we start to get this pullback over here is mark out our highs and our lows and look for our areas of supply that aligns within our premiums. You can see 79% and 88.6%. We've got this premium area of supply, or you can call your extreme area of supply, aligning with those premium levels. Not only do we have that as our confluence, we also have this buildup and this area of liquidity engineering just below our area of supply. This now increases the probability of this setup. So we set our limit at the open of this candle, which was off of the 10 minute time frame you guys can see after it loads up there we go you guys can see we mark it execute on the 10 minute open with stops at the wick high of the 10 minute candle but we go back to the five minute anyway and as you guys can see limits was placed at the open of that 10 minute candle and our take profit was at this area of demand right over here where we got this little bit of inefficiency and as you guys know price end up tapping into our area and it started to reject and sell off from that point Okay, so that was the trade that was taken on EU. Next, we got GU's trade, which was executed today. Now, this trade was very straightforward. This is what we call the power of three. Now, of course, uh, if you guys trade ICT, the power of three or the AMD model is one of the most probable entry models that a lot of traders do use, and I use it myself. Now, the model is quite straightforward. You got the Asian range, which is your accumulation. London open is the manipulation and the New York session is the distribution. Okay. Now, what, what do we know about the Asian session is that the highs and the lows of the Asian session is usually areas of liquidity. So now that we anticipate this, we mark out the Asian session as areas of liquidity. London opens. What did it do? It took out the Asian highs. 
But if Asian highs and Asian lows are areas of liquidity, that would mean after Asian highs is taken, we can also expect that the Asian low liquidity to be taken as well. So now that we go back on GU's chart, what can we see happened during the London Open? This is the Asian session marked out in red. You can see as soon as London opened, market took out the Asian highs liquidity, but it left behind the Asian's low liquidity. So once the Asian high liquidity was taken, then we had that market structure shift over to the downside, which took out these lows because this was the low that formed this wick high. Once we had that market structure shift after the sweep of liquidity, we now look for our areas to sell from. Let's mark that as a change of character. Once we had that change of character, we waited for that pullback into this area of supply. That's when we entered aggressively off of the open of that candle, sorry, the wick low of that candle with stops at the wick high. Market execution was at this point right over here. I'm about to pop up exactly the screenshot that I sent into my team. So we all were able to capitalize on these shorts today. As soon as price began that pullback into this area of supply, we market executed our shorts from this point, take profit being the Asian lows, as that is area of liquidity, which we expect price to take out. And as you guys can see, we got that mitigation. We exited at the Asian lows. As soon as the Asian loan liquidity was taken out, what do you think happened to price? As you guys can see, after the Asian lows was now taken out, there was no liquidity on either side of the Asian session. You can see price just began to pull back after it swept those lows. But anyways, that's all there was to these trades. Technical analysis was very textbook. The trades taken were very rule based. We weren't taking trades based off nonsense. EU's trade, very, very nice, very textbook setup. Lows were taken out. We confirmed the direction. We confirmed we were bearish for the New York session. Liquidity was engineered below our area of supply. Our area of supply aligned with our premium levels. It's a no brainer. We executed ourselves, targeting areas of demand. Boom. GU, London open, took our Asian highs. Asian low liquidity was still open. It wasn't swept. As soon as we had that market structure shift, first pull back into the area of supply. We market executed, targeting the Asian lows, one to three, in and out. We now passed phase one on both the challenges, okay? So guys, trading doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as we have just broken it down. Have a system, have an entry model, stick to specific pairs, don't overcomplicate it, and you can find the consistency and profitability that way. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this little vlog slash breakdown. Hope you found it informative. Hope you got some nuggets out of this. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop it in the comment section or feel free to drop me a DM on my Instagram and I'll try my best to get back to you guys there. Anyways, guys, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.